This is the PowerShell Podcast, the podcast for PowerShell and the PowerShell community. You might just learn something. I think you'll enjoy it. The PowerShell Podcast is a PDQ production. And now, here's your hosts, Jordan Hammond and Andrew Plaw. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the PowerShell Podcast. I'm Ultra Superstar Jordan, along with wildly inconsistent andrew oh man you're tracking me down still we took a break for a couple weeks just us not the podcast well, of course. well no this time i'm pulling from within the two minutes of before we started going live so those are a secret you can't tell anybody what happens before the podcast starts we are just consummate professionals sitting here completely prepared not running around like madmen at all yeah so so normally in our pre-show is where we talk about what we saw and did within powershell within the last week or so but uh if we're being honest both of us kind of checked out of everything for <laughs> we had some big birthdays man we're older than ever wiser than ever and i personally was a little burnt out i know i talked about it on the podcast but i took some time off like longer than i thought i thought like, i took like 12 days off it just was, because it was, the way holidays landed but it was quite the time but I, i'm feeling back ready for business got some good ideas and have the passion and energy to kind of see them through so I was going to say you had seemed low energy, but no one would believe that. Man, I went too long without taking some time off of work. I accidentally went too long and I didn't realize until too late that I needed to schedule some time off and boom, I'm back, got that energy back. So my lesson learned was, you know, when you see yourself getting the beginning signs of burnout, like be proactive, which I was sort of, but you know, each time it kind of creeps up on you, you get busy competing deadlines, you know how it is. We're busy people. Everybody is. Enough, enough of our crap. Let's bring in the superstar. All right. Well, All right. I think we've got some blogs to talk about. Oh, okay. So there's there's a handful of amazing blogs, and I'm sure we're going to talk about them with Christian in this episode. But check out our show notes. because The guy's been putting in work. There's a lot of great content there, in particular about the PowerShell performance uh, with file reading. Super cool discovery there. Um, and you know what, Jordan? This isn't just any guest. We've plugged this guest multiple times. We've plugged their blogs. I mean, this is this is a heavy hitter. And to me, Christian Ritter embodies what it's like to be in the PowerShell community and kind of grow with it, get involved, start blogging, make new connections, take the next steps. Um, so yeah, Jordan, who are we joined with today? You already said his name. We have Christian Ritter. Boom! You have this. <laughs> hey, an alley-oop, it's just a layup, okay? What's up, well, Christian? Perhaps. Hey guys, thanks for having me. <laughs> hey, thanks for I'm, joining us. I know I've been in contact with you for a while, but it's nice mm. to actually get you on the pod, introduce you to our audience. I know we've we've said some nice things about you in a couple episodes, but to get a chance to chat, we're very lucky. Yeah, like I said, um, I was kind of nervous before things started, so I guess after a few minutes, I will be more chilled than right now. So um, yeah, <laughs> but I'm. Um, Totally excited to be your guest today or tonight in Germany. <laughs> well, if uh, if the two of us arguing about whether or not Andrew said he was ready didn't get you ready, excited for this, I don't know what would. <laughs> yeah, and I appreciate you saying that you're nervous because honestly, I'm a little bit nervous too. I'm kind of used to it now, but I think many people who would find themselves being interviewed for the first time and on this kind of thing would feel nervous. Um, so you're definitely not alone. But <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's cool to get to know the different people in the community. Yeah, I just don't think that uh, playing uh, with Poker Face could take you any step further than from the current situation away. So just um, say, okay, this is the current state, and then we can handle the situation and uh, see the needs of each other. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, this, I'm actually, has me curious, because you've spoken at uh, PSConf EU, right? No, I haven't. No. Oh, well, then I was going to say, how, how can you do that and be just fine? It's like, well, but this makes you nervous. But <laughs> apparently I just, I've, I, uh, I, I misunderstood on whether I didn't, I haven't done speaking either. It's, it's scary. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but for speaking, um, it turns out that maybe or maybe not, uh, maybe it's also a spoiler. I don't know. Um, I'm going to be um, a little speaker at the PSCon view this year. Um, so there are lunchtime or lunch break sessions. I like to say about 10 or 15 minutes, call them lightning sessions, I guess. And, um, so I got in contact with Gail and he asked me and probably this could be my first time as a speaker 
for a whole audience and not only for millions of people on Spotify or YouTube or <laughs> <laughs> right. What else? Speaking about just technical stuff. That's a great first experience speaking. I know um, at PowerShell Summit they do lightning talks as well. And it's just such a good opportunity to get out there. You don't have to obsess over a super long presentation, but you can get the experience of like going out there, showing some technical stuff and uh, hopefully making it easier for next time to maybe do a full size presentation or whatever the case may be. And shout out mm. to Gail because he's awesome. Yeah, sure. Now, while we're on PSCon for you, you went last year for your first year. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. I just wanted to uh, be there all the other years before since I uh, heard of it. And so it was in Hannover, I guess, or I think. Um, so I'm living in Germany. That would be a great uh, fit, but I couldn't get this managed uh, due to yeah some some pricing, I like to say. <laughs> because, um, yeah, currently I'm in a well, better position. Uh, because my um, current um, my current company is paying all of this, so that's really great, really huge. I'm very thankful for that. But I also heard some guys are paying for their own, and it could be quite tough to manage this. So um, fully respect for them, and hopefully, also their situation changed to something like they get paid for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's always interesting to see the people who are willing and see the benefit of investing mm -hmm. in themselves to go into these kinds of things. And I think that also if you're a speaker, it makes it a bit easier because yeah, sure, it costs down a bit. <laughs> but yeah, that's exciting. Now, last year, were there any particular sessions that you were you remember or were pretty excited I, about? I, I remember all of them that I attended, but um, there was some kind of uh, security related sessions um, which. I think some of them got cut out for special parts um, <laughs> because, uh, yeah, security related stuff, <laughs> which shouldn't be shown. Um, then there was some, for example, a talk from uh, April Edwards, and she's amazing on stage. So um, and I think one of the last um, episodes of yours, uh, you said go to the session which is most fun. And um, we watch them you want to grab uh take us uh, the most of it out of it so i just did this and i just will do this again this year <laughs> because oh. yeah just have the time of your life as at the conference um they just want to be there <laughs> was that your first powershell conference that you went to uh yeah it was my it was my first conference I um, attended years ago for some um, communication congress um, conference um, not not a big one but some sort of and yeah that that was I don't say this was a bad community or bad crowd but it was so distanced and um, just to be there at um, the conference EU was a totally other um, situation because the guys were so welcoming, warmly and friendly. Um, that was, that is fantastic. You can also see this on Twitter or some Discord servers and so on. Um, they are always open-minded for giving you feedback, helping you out. And yeah, but we will dig to this deeper and later on the stock, I think so. <laughs> So, yeah. So last year, important first conference, were you blogging and active in the community before that? Or was that kind of like the thing that got you started? Um, mm, I, I don't think so that this was the point where I got started. This was the point where I thought, okay, I will want to contribute to the community. This was also the first idea that I wanted to start my um, PowerShell user group, which didn't made out <laughs> last year and hopefully this year is um, better <laughs> um, yeah but um, it got the spirit rolling I like to say and um, yeah exp uh, one specific point for starting plugging um, I didn't have I just had a feeling okay now I have a pressure in the chest um, give something back and then I saw also the blog of um, Adam Beck, 
and tried his, ich glaube, I, I think it was Netlify or something like that that he used. Yeah. Um, okay, it didn't fit, fit my needs. I just wanted to have something easier, just Markdown put there and it's fine. <laughs> That's the reason why I'm on DevDojo right now. Um, and I found this, this platform for blogging and yeah, just started. Discoveries, what is, uh, what comes to me, what I've searched a long time for, or yeah, what could be interesting for the whole community, or it's especially a, some parts. <laughs> it's a good workflow to get into, and I see you've been pretty busy. Um, you've been blogging for a couple months, and there's already, I, I didn't count exactly, but dozens, it seems like, at least about two dozen um, blogs out there, so it seems like you've hit the ground running. Yeah, lately I just um, had some uh, family things up and running, so it also my my frequency was lowered. But um, yeah, I always search for the for the cool thing that not everybody knows. So why 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 always play this wheel is not invented here. So uh, sometimes this quick uh, takes some time. Um, but yeah, I just have an, I just have another few blog posts in the queue. But um, yeah, could could take some time. But uh, yeah, <laughs> nice. It's I don't know anybody who started blogging and regrets it. Seems like it's always just a positive thing all around. I can't I can't um, disagree. <laughs> It, it, it's one of those, I don't know, everyone has something to say. And even if you're not comfortable talking in groups, which is a common mm -hmm. thing among PowerShell community, you, writing's a good way around that. You're still getting your message out without having to feel, mm -hmm. in my case, extremely awkward. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I'm, I believe, you, you know, I was reading through your little bio you sent me, I'll be honest. And it says that you got a promotion in 2018, and that's when you kind of fell in love with PowerShell. Does that sound about right? Um, I fell in love in PowerShell on the very first day at my starting point of my career, <laughs> where, where I was a trainee in 2011 um, for my MSP, uh, for MSP company, um, because uh, there was just one simple task, uh, create on a test domain a bunch of users. You have a CSV file, do it or find a nice way to work around. And I just uh, was also quite familiar with um, C Sharp a bit. So the whole .NET environment wasn't completely new to me. <laughs> so um, I decided, okay, uh, check, okay, what, what could I use to automate this whole task? And then after a quick Google search, yeah, what comes to the first few hits on Google, is PowerShell. So I just uh, checked out, even don't knowing how uh, an Active Directory is currently working or what is currently in OU or all the, all the other stuff, but I just was a test domain. So what could go wrong? Just try it out and test it. And um, turned out quite well after a few tries. <clears throat> uh, snapshots uh, saved my bacon. So <laughs> um, yeah, and then then was fixed for this and so all, the whole time for um going through from uh, first level to second level and to finally system engineering role or position um PowerShell was always on my side so if any customer wanted some feedback about make use or something like that exchange uh, related um i just could give them what they wanted to have and I like to say uh, even today I'm rather taking some information out of a system instead of giving it to the system because I don't want to break anything <laughs> at all. <Right. laughs> so um, yeah, and there were many situations where I got more comfortable with PowerShell. I think okay, I started with uh, custom objects with the. Uh, pipe, add member, property, stuff like that. So really the basic beginnings and fix the race size and plus equals and destroy the whole thing and rebuild it new and performance was not an issue at all <laughs> because I didn't know how to make it better or faster. Um, yeah, but 
after some time and also talking to some people on Discord, for example, got me into, okay, how to improve or refactoring code at all. And even this today is uh, one of my uh, favorite things to do. <laughs> Refactor code. It sounds yeah. like you've kind of grown with PowerShell, you know, as your expertise yeah. has grown. And even to this point where it's like almost a personal growth thing, because now you're on podcasts, you're doing blogging, you're pushing yourself. It's it's kind of cool to see other people have that experience. And it it's cool that it's not like this is an overnight thing, right? This took time, mm -hmm. one step at a time. Yeah. You know, you mentioned 2018, you got that promotion and it's, it's a similar... Uh, that's whenever I kind of super got into PowerShell was 2018. It's so cool to see other people kind of having a similar experience and going through that mm. PowerShell journey, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah, I also had some struggle with um, administrating file servers and um, yeah, I, I hate the um, limit for the whole path, especially when you have some SharePoint and SharePoint don't care about the whole length of folders and files and so on. And then you web dev into it. <laughs> and then you try to get um, child item things out of it and go say crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. there, there, this was a point where I felt in love with modules because um, for most of these situations, you got your bacon saved because someone had a similar problem, probably most of the time, like always, and provide a solution. <laughs> and you mentioned Discord, and I just want to shout out yeah. for our listeners, aka.ms slash PS Discord. If you are not a member of the PowerShell Discord, it's a great place to ask questions and to kind of get some more exposure to the community and find a place where there's a lot of people in PowerShell and you can kind of catch a vibe there because not everyone is attended an event like you mentioned before. So it's it's a great entry point. You get your questions answered. You'll meet some new people. It's a good time. Yeah, and most of the time, uh, Chris Dent or Simling Science or um, B and the WEQ or uh, IS Reset Me is the whole day online. I said like so <laughs> and they really know their stuff you know shout out yeah. chris dent they yeah. he is probably the most request requested um podcast guest that we've had and uh, he's helped out so many people written some good books awesome person yeah definitely so i always have my i have his book on my desk so um yeah <laughs> nice now we mentioned PowerShell Conference EU, and we should say it's happening pretty soon. I think it's about about two weeks from the time this is posted. Will be PSCon for you time. Nineteenth Ju uh, July, uh, June, uh, June, uh, June nineteenth, right? June. Thank you. Mm, yep. I was in yep. German stuck. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> hey, kudos to you for speaking multiple languages. That's very cool. <laughs> Yeah, speaking and good speaking are two different sides of the page. So yeah, but I'm, I'm trying to. Um, Me too. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's starting soon. Um, like any other, anyone other else that ever ever ex uh, attended is excited about it. So hopefully, yeah. you could make it next year. <laughs> I'm hoping. <laughs> I'm hoping. I was trying to, you know, send you some of our podcast stickers, but unfortunately, mm -hmm. we ran into some shipping issues there. But yeah, yeah. I'm hoping to make a physical appearance next year because I've only heard great things uh, about PowerShell Conference EU, and getting to tap in with that community would be pretty cool. Yeah, I don't know if the rumors are true, but I think it's the the coolest conference. <laughs> so <laughs> no, just joking aside. Uh, but this um, is actually it's it's one that we've talked about. With several people have been to both and the only definitive we've really gotten so far was the alcohol was better at PSCon for you. Every, everything else, there's a lot of, well, they're both great. I, w I wasn't at a summit, so I can't say, um, but yeah, I'm living in Germany, so I am have to be a beer expert, I guess. <laughs> and <laughs> so I don't want to um, destroy any um, rumors about Germans and yeah, so I just can say, okay, we know our we know our stuff, so this have to be better. You know, Fred. Yeah, sure. Oh, I love Fred. Have you met him at PSCon for you, or how do you? Yeah, I, I met him. I also um, was with him at the at the um, 
user group meetup not not physically it was one online before and um yeah his beard is stunning not stunning as rob's beard but um nearly <laughs> and um <laughs> he knows his stuff totally he does and he's so much fun to hang out with and a nice person like it's great when you have mm -hmm. that person with deep technical knowledge and experience and yeah. they're open to questions and encouraging and of people of all levels because he helped me out when i was a super noob um asking the silliest questions and he couldn't have been more patient but as we're talking about you know german and beer and alcohol drinking i want to highlight a tweet from fred earlier this month hey folks totally drunk right now so only the most unscrupulous rogue would try to scam me right now also published a module today to help securely exchange documents when all other means fail not sure whether the two items have a causal relationship like, uh, i love that <laughs> i love that it's yeah. just amazing i wish i could get drunk and just produce amazing modules that blow minds but it's not me yeah if you fully blooded a genius so uh, nothing can destroy you not even right. alcohol <laughs> right shout out to fred yeah now uh you mentioned doing a lot of blogs and earlier we teased something we teased a little blog that had some pretty cool info that i had no clue about <laughs> and that was your powershell performance test for file reading yeah sure um if you want i can say something about it at first check the show notes then you can read it <laughs> but yeah. um yeah, let me let me tell you something about it. I just wanted to know, okay, what is the fastest method for um, reading a whole file line by line until the end? So I checked um, just get content like anybody else would do uh, with some basic knowledge of the PowerShell language. Um, then I just checked some some classes um, from .NET Framework like. Um, System IO file and uh, stream reader, I, I think. So I didn't have it in my face right now. So I just have to remember. <laughs> and then I just searched online, okay, what else methods I could use? Ask ChatGPT. And ChatGPT also just offered me the um, methods on, uh, earlier, um, earlier said. Um, and then I just stumbled along some blog posts and just found okay um switch could be the fastest i guess okay what, what, what about switch and then i said okay um for switch you have a file parameter and this thing rocks the show because uh it was quite the fastest method for the complete uh reading of a file and um yeah i just tested it, checked it but for a 500,000 lines file, and yeah, it's true. It's the fastest. <laughs> Which is pretty cool. Um, and just to kind of break that down for people who are trying to imagine in their head, so it's a switch statement with yeah. just after switch, it has dash switch file, case, yeah. and then you provide it a file path. Yeah. In the parentheses, you just provide the path to the file, and then just use the default block, for example, and, just, and then it iterates through. Yep, I had no clue about that. So I love blogs that do that. They kind of take you on a story because you could have just written a one paragraph like, hey, this is the fastest way. Mm. But instead, we get to go on a journey, right? We get to kind of see, oh, I think that this method might be fast. And OK, there's these other different ways. And boom, in the end, you, you learn something new. Yeah, I like, I like to compare things. Um, so um, there was one once a uh, session at the PowerShell conference in, I think it was Hanover. So it could be could be 2018 or 2017. Um, there was some some guy who worked for for um, computer games company, and he just showed okay um, how to do things very very fast. And um, he also used uh, some some .NET classes for that, for example, and. Um, this was really stunning because uh, when you just see the compare from one method to another, even a chart, for example, um, it's it's really stunning. And he also took the time to uh, bring this up with um, with okay how the uh, memory is allo uh, allocated, for example, in compare to the time difference. So just find the maybe the best fit for your scenario. Yeah, because um, 
you want to be fast, for example, in Azure Functions, um, but maybe you want also not have uh, that many resources used. And yeah, that's something I just want also to to learn how to bring this in into something I show or my tests. Um, yeah. Nice. Yeah, I think that one of my favorite um, PowerShell Summit talks is usually when Josh King goes about seeing what the best way to do things, the fastest way to do things mm. in PowerShell is. It's just fun to see. Yeah, it's always also stunning when Matthias is uh, going so deeply into .NET and the whole framework and creeps the uh, as out of me <laughs> because uh, what is possible and how compl how shortly complex situations get. Uh, if you see, for example, the AST or something like that, and yeah, so I always see. Okay, I'm quite at the not at the very first start of my journey, hopefully, but I made some progress, but the hill is very high <laughs> to reach yep. the top. <laughs> Always a good reminder to yeah. compare ourselves to our past selves, not mm. Matthias or other people who <laughs> who were really out there yeah. doing some wild stuff with PowerShell. I think I'm the only person alive actively getting worse. So if I, I can't compare myself to my past self either. Worse is relative, man. You know, I think in some ways you're definitely getting better, even if you aren't using language as much as you once did, you know, in terms of communicating with others about it, spreading the good word of, of PowerShell and getting people into it. So I'm, that's I'm not my, easy. Role. My, my role is to look pretty and talk about other people's awesome work. I'm crushing <laughs> it. You're doing very good. Uh, no. <laughs> Jokes aside. Um, yeah, for uh, the whole learning journey to give something back to the community is one thing, but I also try is to um, encourage coworkers to yeah. um, use the language, take it, and make your life easier. And so I also started to to um, make some workshops also. So when I'm not as a um, system engineer working as a consultant on the customer side, I don't get often in touch with colleagues. Um, so just taking every three months, uh, one session, um, or giving one session to them. Um, yeah, it's, I think it's also, um, yeah, a good thing to, to help uh, make other lives easier. <laughs> yeah. How's that been for you? Like, how do you go about teaching those? Are you having everyone use PowerShell on their own and you're talking? Or are you like beside them, helping them do the commands? How do you approach um, that? To be honest, uh, for my one-on-one -on -one workshop, I also asked on Twitter, okay, what could I do for that, for example? Um, because it was a quite larger audience uh, than my initial first one-on-one -on -one for five people. <laughs> um, with large, I mean, it's one twenty people. So yeah, <laughs> also not that big, and it's coworkers. So who want to who want to blame? So yeah, <laughs> no. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I just go by spinning up just VS Code and try to reduce every clutter. So folders aside and just the basic. Uh, I, I could use a Notepad, but uh, yeah. Who wants that? Um, so, and just going by, okay, what, what are the basics? What are variables? What is PowerShell for? Um, and then just going ahead with, okay, now we want to um, iterate through uh, a folder, getting the size out of it. So base, really stupid, uh, stupid is wrong term, uh, really basic starting examples. Yeah. And from that on, I just asked them, okay, what you do on your daily day to day basis? What have you? What is your, what is one thing? And then I try to uh, see, okay, how to uh, automate this, how to improve the whole workflow they struggle with, for example, um, and so just keep them curious what is, what else is possible to do. So um, yeah. That's so the my my starting my starting workshop and then afterwards uh, for one or two or one or three I just go into okay functions definitions and so on 
um, how to set up an, an dev environment for this VS Code, Windows Terminal, and something like that. Just a bit, a bit deeper. <laughs> so your your first one is a bold stance to take because even new to PowerShell doesn't mean they're not going to come up with a complex thing to automate. So leaving that up to them initially could lead to quite an undertaking for your first ever uh, showcase. Mm, I'm, I'm wondering right now. Um, yeah, just... I, I think I missed I missed the question. Oh, so, so oh, it, it's a, you mentioned in there for your first one that you asked them for something they're currently working on or want to yeah. automate, and you take that task on. Uh, no, uh, not, not, not what, to... what they want to automate. I just ask them uh, what they do. Oh, okay. Just on a daily basis. So oh, if okay. they say, okay, I have to move that file every day from A to B, and then check the output of something like that, and I say, okay, we could shift this file with script terms. Just check check them and then send us a mail, and then you have nothing more to do with it. Oh, for okay, example, so it's just basic example. Yeah, it's, it's definitely just my misunderstanding because, like, you, if yeah. you ask them what they're looking to honor, that could lead to I could open the door to some extreme examples on on minute one. But I think I really do like the approach of solving a problem for people because yes. Jordan, we we ran a PowerShell one hundred and one class recently, and that was one of the suggestions was to solve a problem for them. And I think we're redoing it next Tuesday. I guess the day after this comes out. And I think that's one thing I'm going to do is find somebody in the group who has like some kind of problem to automate and go through that, go through breaking it down because a lot of times what can feel like a really complex thing to automate to somebody who's newer to PowerShell mm -hmm. is just a series of simple steps. And helping people break that down can really make it so in their mind, there's this huge impossible problem to like, oh, hey, there's like three steps you have to figure out, three commands you're going to need to run and figure out how to connect them, um, which can be pretty empowering, I found. It's like, whoa, I can do really cool things. I thought I could just run singular commands. You can run multiple singular commands <laughs> time together and get yourself a script. Woo! Yeah, see, seeing value, I think, earlier is better for sure. Yeah. yeah, I think I think one of the toughest um, things for um, starters is um, to understand how business logic works. So, um, or how logic itself of a script could work. So, from where I have to start to get my final result, and just to give them a mindset to just explore, define the uh, steps one at a time. So they come to uh, to the end because, yeah, sure, you can say, okay, you have to do this, 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 then have a solution for exactly one problem. But uh, in another situation, um, they can't solve it again on their own. So um, showing them how to solve a problem for each step, I think is the key for the whole, uh, whole thing. Yep. And I think that in PowerShell, like there's nothing more powerful than teaching someone else how to, to harness the power of it and to use it. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that is better use of your time, in my opinion, for me at least, than teaching someone else to do what you can do. Because then you just have multiple versions of you out here solving problems, <laughs> doing things, and you don't have to be the only one to, to bear the whole burden. And you can send people on their own awesome PowerShell journeys like you've gone on and I've gone on and Jordan's gone on. And you know maybe we've helped other people in different parts of theirs. And it's just such a cool wholesome thing that ties back to helping out the business, but also like as individuals, we get to have a really fun time. You can tell by the way we're talking about all this, that it's it's fun to dive into PowerShell, figure problems out, automate them, make your life easier. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I also think um, contrib uh, contributing to the PowerShell community uh, repositories for projects like debate tools or, um, many many others um i think it's also a good thing if you want um to help the community or um get yourself uh, a step further in the whole journey because um for example i had a situation where it's just saw a dba tool issue and it was just a returning issue so one property in a um in a custom object wasn't wasn't correct and i just said okay i just step through the code check okay what what could be the missing point found it out uh, quite quickly found a way to make it from my point of view 
a little bit more uh, less bloated because the uh, for many return scenarios um, for the function for the um, custom object this was the whole custom object with always the same properties except of one or three uh, one up to three and um, so I just said okay make it in the beginning and then uh, just change the properties for the situations for example and uh, just fix the one return value and it was not a big deal it was easy, easy going and but what it th uh, taught me was um the whole process for contributing making a fork of a project in in github just uh, push it to um for merging for example um learned was what app voyage is for so that they just test the whole uh, the whole um, repository that you want to merge through sort of the uh, completely whole process and this was kind of kind of interest interesting to me because i have never contributed to something big like dba tools before yeah i did some code refactoring for smaller little scripts or projects maybe but for something like that this was um yeah stunning <laughs> Yeah, it feels cool too to like contribute to something that you've used and you know other people are using. It really makes you feel kind of connected to the whole thing. And uh, I was able to fix something even if I don't know the whole whole tooling because okay, I, I have a book here even signed for, uh, with Rob's uh, stamp, <laughs> which is very cool because he gave it to me on the uh, Porsche conference <laughs> last year. Nice. Um, and okay, I, I, I've won it. So um, he didn't give me it on his own oh, directly. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, there was 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 some kind of some kind of demo sessions on uh, lightning, like lightning sessions, and some people who uh, give them some questions were able to grab a book. So <laughs> I was lucky one. <laughs> so yeah. Um, but this aside. Um, Currently, I didn't use DBA tools because I'm not a database engineer or something similar like that. But um, it's totally cool that I just because I know some something about PowerShell was able to fix something for a whole topic that I don't know anything about currently, right now. <laughs> and were you familiar with Git and GitHub before that project? I just had a GitHub repo or uh, one or two. <laughs> just pushing code there uh, years ago, <laughs> which I currently uh, lately rejected <laughs> nice. because it was was a shame. Um, <laughs> and um, no, but but the whole the whole um, collaboration work, I had no clue about because um, I always were at the customer side one man show. Yeah, I just have a have a DevOps uh, GitHub just for managing my stuff, but there is no contribution at all. So, right. I think a lot of people get started with like their own personal repo for their scripts or little mm. things they use. Um, or maybe they get started on GitHub because they are creating a blog that uses it. But once you get past the first little hurdle of figuring out how it works, like you're mentioning, it feels really cool to contribute code. Like for me, I was, I'm not historically a developer, but man, I was contributing code to projects. Like what? I felt so cool and mainstream. I was like, oh man, I'm helping the bigger picture here. And, <laughs> yeah. and you are, right? Even if you're just opening up issues, mm -hmm. but just tapping into that next level of being involved in the community is very yeah. helpful. Then, then I, like I said, I'm uh, very um, into refactoring. Sometimes I, for fixing this issue, I came across uh, another thing which drove me nuts um, because some some examples in a file didn't hit um, they wasn't they wasn't correct so mm. I thought okay if this is in one file maybe this is in another file so I just uh, run through all of the um, all of these synapses for the help for the examples and just checked okay if the name is mentioned in the example for in the synapses and turns out three of them were completely wrong raised an issue and got them removed so well, i removed them and then pull merge and so on um yeah but 
but with that in mind or doing something which isn't an issue always feels like uh, going into private space of someone because they didn't ask for help i just saw this and did this yeah it, this was some kind of an issue i like to say but on the other hand for example uh, you all know clayt clayt yeah clayton oh clayton oh yeah clayton yeah yeah, yeah yeah i know <laughs> Uh, for example, he um, always shows some scripts or something like that, and then I okay, see, uh, want to know what he's doing, so I read the whole file, and maybe I come up with one or two ideas how to improve this file. And even if he didn't ask for, I just have the idea, and then I ask him, okay, hey, this could you could change this by this and this and this. And it always feels like intimidating, to be honest. But um, yeah. on the other hand, I never had a bad experience for doing so. Yeah, but it's always the, always for the first time, it always feels, don't feel right. <laughs> I agree with you. Starting that conversation, it's like, you're like you're saying getting into someone's code that you know mm. whenever i've posted code sometimes it feels vulnerable to post it out there so yeah. you know you might be stepping into that space with them um and but like you said most people are really friendly and kind about it but it's also for me i worry about not sending a thorough enough message where i really show that i really tried hard without <laughs> asking first or, or whatever like that you know but but yeah, yeah. I've definitely heard it's a great idea to, to open up an issue and and communicate with the person even mm. if they don't end up using it yeah uh, like i always say in my blog posts or my twitter postings when i mention some scripts that i've worked on uh if you have something great to say about it to improve it just let me know because i like that feedback i just want to grow further so and it's such a better way to approach it as someone putting things out there in the world if you had to make everything perfect that's a very, that's like a burden because no one can do that. Having the approach of, hey, I'm going to do my best currently. And if I'm always open for feedback, I'm always open for improvements. I'm a work in progress like we all are. You know, my skills are currently getting better, blah, blah, blah. It's just such an easier way to go about things. And it makes conversations and growing so much easier as well. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So. I know you mentioned, I read some notes of yours earlier, mm -hmm. and I want to talk about the graph, uh, the Microsoft Graph API, because I know a lot of people are dealing with this, a lot of people are struggling, but I've heard you've had some successes and some experience with this. Yeah, I'm, I'm not an expert at all, so there are many people out there that are way more into it than I am, but um, I have a little uh, story to share, if you like, um, because the first time I came up, uh, I came across Microsoft Graph was half a year before the Microsoft Graph module was out. So uh, I just had a had a customer a customer topic. They wanted to have some automation on the mailbox, for example, and uh, someone mentioned uh, EWS for doing so. Another one came up with, okay, we could um, take this mailbox and put it into Outlook and use the com object to automate some things in it. And I was like, okay, um, com object, never ever. <laughs> and EVS, um, I just made a quick Google search, okay, this product is totally uh, running out. And if you want to go online, then use the Microsoft Graph module. And then I just dig deeper into it. And um, yeah, it was the first time I learned many more things about REST API calls, about authentication, about certificate uh, authentication, about app registrations and the whole topics on because it was completely um, yeah, new land to me. <laughs> so um, the, the quests were very green at the site and um, yeah, so I just dig deeper into it. And um, about 600 lines later and half year passed, uh, then yeah, we had a module and I thought, okay, should I refactor this whole thing? <laughs> and I was like, no, I'm kind of proud of it. <laughs> I just want to keep it as it, as it is. And um, if a new project comes, which I have to uh, use uh, Microsoft Graph, then I could 
dig into the the module. Um, at the very first, I wasn't the biggest fan of it, to be honest, um, because you always have to struggle with object IDs and couldn't uh, feel so, uh, for, especially for Exchange Online tasks. Um, I felt so, um, yeah, so different than everything else I've ever used in PowerShell modules from Microsoft and so on. And um, today I'm more comfortable with the whole module. They had made many improvements. Yeah. It isn't perfect. I don't, I can, I can truly say that, but um, they make really progress there. And I think it's also some some kind of auto-generated module, I think, because they see only the, the REST endpoint and build the whole thing up on if it's their new if there is a new endpoint. I guess I thought I heard rumors about it. Maybe maybe you you know more about us than me. No. No, you're the well, my question is, when are you yeah. gonna get some blog content on on the graph API? You thinking about that? I know it's um, a big topic, but currently, currently, um, I haven't thought about it quite yet. Um, maybe, maybe I could prime this because this year I'm about to um, have a have a workshop uh, for the MS six hundred, I guess, certification, and there would dig way more deeper into the whole topic, and maybe there are some some news that I could fetch out from this uh, workshop and also maybe make new discoveries because that's what I try to do, making new discoveries which aren't quite common um, and blog about it. So just for, for really basic stuff, how to authenticate and so on, there are many, many blog posts out there which maybe knows the stuff better than I do. So I just say, okay, just wait for it. Maybe uh, something comes up, and okay, I think it's worthy to write it down. <laughs> right. It seems like a lot of your blogs have that kind of useful information where it's like, oh, you learned something new, boom, share it. Mm -hmm. A cool little discovery. Jordan, do you know what time it is? I was just checking my clock, and I think it's time for some of the hardest hitting questions in the PowerShell community. community. It, it, it is it is time to. Uh, this is the part where everyone dreads. This is why most people back out of the podcast because the next three <laughs> questions are that intimidating. My blood is rushing. But right I, I feel I feel like Christian <laughs> is qualified to handle the common parameters. I think so too. I think we asked him for a reason to be on this. I think yeah. he can handle them. <laughs> Yeah, are you ready, Christian, for number one? Yeah. yeah. What's one time something went wrong on the job? How did you handle it? Yeah, there were many situations because I, my IT journey isn't yet, uh, isn't quite really long, but isn't that even short? <laughs> so I'm I'm totally in the middle. And um, there were once a situation where I can remember. Um, it was way before um, my big PowerShell thing, so it's not that related to PowerShell, but to my IT career, to be honest. Uh, there was a rollout on the customer side for uh, with some new Fint clients. I think it was Dell Wise, whatever clients, and I automated the whole process with their engine, made some BB scripts because this was Windows embedded, don't judge. <laughs> and um, yeah, I um, I set this all, whole thing up and it was running really fine on the test lines that I had. And then we showed up by, on the customer side, we um, put all the new uh, clients out there and then they just should get discovered by the um, server engine, get a fresh new, um, get a fresh new um, image, and then everything should be fine. Should be a task for about, let me say, an hour. And um, all of them went into blue screens. And I thought, okay, what the heck? Why? And then. I checked also my my uh, image which I prepared for this and everything was was fine. It worked on my machine. 
So why it don't work there? And then I uh, took one of the boxes and there I saw there was a completely other um, CPU architecture. It was a, uh, um, I think it was, I tested on a, on a uh, dual core and this was a quad core. And at this time, the whole pre preparation were doomed, <laughs> I like to say. And um, yeah, then I had uh, to rebuild the whole thing at the customer side once again, which took quite a long time. <laughs> and my lesson learned from it were, um, don't trust if anyone says, okay, we will ship exactly that to the customer. Believe me, no, don't believe. Just take one exactly copy of this was will be there. Test your stuff out in the early stages. See that will do, and don't have to rush at the customer side with a, a red hat. <laughs> I, so. uh, I I choose to interpret this differently. Uh, you didn't uh, you didn't do something wrong in the job. What you did is you generated a new feature, which is blue screen on demand. Yeah. <laughs> and we, we just need to find out a purpose for this feature. Yeah, if you if you want to have free. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, pass question was, one. Yeah. Pass, all right, number two, it only, it only gets more difficult from here. I hope I hope you're ready. Mm -hmm. With all of your accumulated knowledge that you've gathered over your time in IT, what is the first thing you would tell your younger self when you were first starting out? um talk about problems in the early stages don't just try to do a one-man show so um just communicate with others just say okay i run into this problem um have you ever heard of it because even when you start as an it engineer or a support guy in any role um with some problems you always feel feel ashamed or I was, I felt, I felt ashamed, yeah, because okay, there was a problem. I wasn't able to fix it in a minute, and so maybe I'm not right in this, in this place. <laughs> and um, but at any point later, I come, I come to the conclusion: everyone struggles every day, every hour, for example, could be, yeah, and um, just communicate early. And um, so you are able to adopting solutions quite earlier, L benefit from it, learn from it, improve yourself. Um, I don't say, okay, don't don't make your own researches. No, do, you can do this totally. But at a specific point, you will come to have a deadline and you just stress yourself out. And this is something you want to avoid. Or I want to avoid. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, that's some. That's one of my favorite answers to this one ever, Jordan. It's so good. It applies to me. I, so, I continually am learning this. The moment he said better communication, I could almost feel you <laughs> just go happy. It's like yeah, that, that's that's uh, you're speaking to Andrew's soul there. Christian knows what I like to hear, I guess. <laughs> but it's so true, and especially you know, Christian, probably at your work based on what you said, you're probably one of the more advanced PowerShell people. And by you demonstrating the ability to ask questions and maybe even be vulnerable and get different opinions, you open the door for other people to do that same behavior and make it easier on them so then they don't have the same burden that that uh, the person who does it first goes through. So really great stuff there. Love to see it. And if you don't have anyone at work who knows PowerShell, you're totally alone. They're not going to be helpful. Like I mentioned earlier, I'll give it another plug. AKA.ms slash PS Discord is the PowerShell official Discord mm -hmm. where you can tap into the community there and you don't have to be alone. Yeah. Great answer. I think that's one. Speaking of good communication, if you were to do something like hold a PowerShell class on Discord every once in a while, Andrew, should you communicate with the person you're expecting to go host or should you just casually drop that information, like uh, say at the start of a web or podcast? You know, Jordan, um, it all depends on if the person remembers the conversation <laughs> that we had or remembers the calendar invite that was there for a few weeks. You know, that's the determining factor, I'd say. All right. En enough of me uh, airing <laughs> more dirty laundry. Let's go to the third common parameter. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Christian, what are your three favorite modules? 
Uh, that's that's a hard decision. I think that's the hardest of, of uh, all of them that you asked me. But um, I guess I could name one immediately. It's uh, Get Child Item 2. Maybe you heard of it. No, um, I have not. This is new territory. Yeah, it's it's based to the to the fact that if you have a long path, like I said for um, SharePoint and WebDAV, you are able to iterate through it. You don't have any problems. Uh, you just can go completely into it. I think I, I already read the code a while ago, and I think they opening UPS drives with um, hard links on it just uh, that you're able to iterate through recursively. <laughs> That's the whole basic concept of it. I just, it, it saved my bacon for some uh, file server administration <laughs> a while ago. And so um, that's also the reason why I have to mention the next module. It's uh, NTFS security, I think it's called. Um, because same problem. When you have to, uh, when you struggle with ACLs and so on, and the path is quite long, then uh, you have the same problem with, uh, like with basic uh, child item, and the sentence for you. It also iterates through um, um, recursively through all of the ACLs, and you can say, okay, stop when you go um, by um, when when the uh, ACL. Um, hierarchy isn't, uh, I struggle with the English term, um, when the ACL permissions isn't redirected anymore through it. As soon as it stops, um, how, how it's called in English. Um, you can, you can, for album, um, are you looking for like inheritance or am I way off? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Until until this stops, then it don't iterate any further for this path for for the ACL object, for example, mm -hmm. just to get a idea. Okay, how is my file server lined up, for example? I think it's a really great module, even if you're in um, some MSP company, because then you always struggle with file servers. <laughs> so maybe we will get rid of them in the near future by the mighty cloud, but currently. <laughs> Uh, in many situations, we have to take this as it is. And the last one is um, automated labs. Automated lab, global or single, I'm, I'm quite unsure. But um, spinning up VMs on premises in Azure just for testing, just for um, deploying some things, because um, currently I'm trying to get more into. Um, App deployment, Intune stuff, and so on. And so um, I just checked the PS app deploy module out and just have had to have an environment which I just could build, destroy, draw again. So nearly the same with Docker containers, but for whole VMs. And so shout out to Automate Lab. <laughs> yep. Great one. I think we've done a couple episodes on yeah. that one. Um, and I want to mention for Get Child Item 2, I did some research yeah. on it. That is actually a command in the NTFS security. Ah, module. oh no. So just a heads up, I was looking for it. No, it's okay. That's right. We're still, I, I think we're it's still worth highlighting. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah it still counts. Yeah. <laughs> but just a heads up for people looking for that module, NTFS security. Yeah. Okay. I guess, I guess, I guess I had heard of it that is integrated now. Well, I mean, if, there, if there's a part of a module that's so valuable and used by you that it becomes their own module in your mind, it sounds to me like it's worth worth mentioning twice. Yeah, it was it was a, a standalone module years ago. So <laughs> yeah, probably that. Mm. Well, Christian, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but we have among us the someone is so good at shilling it is actually banned for andrew to shill in seven different countries because it's just too dangerous if he doesn't you know use it responsibly but for the case of this podcast we've actually managed to let him unleash all of that talent and skill for pure good so now sit back and watch andrew shill the podcast take it away andrew <laughs> Forgot we were doing this. We haven't recorded in a couple of weeks. So a am bit. I prepared? Yeah, I am. Of course. I'm always ready. You don't 
get ready, you stay ready. And you know what? When you're doing the best weekly power cell podcast out there, you got to do what you got to do. And if you're still listening, thank you so much. Give us a like, comment, and subscription. If you're watching on YouTube, ding the bell, go for it. If you are listening to us on a podcast platform like Apple Podcasts, feel free to leave us a five-star review and say something nice. And you know what? We just might read it out in a future episode. No guarantees, but maybe a guarantee. If you have questions or feedback, you can email us, powershell at pdq.com with feedback, suggestions, whatever you got. And if you want to keep up with me, I'm at Andrew Platek. That guy over there, my handsome friend, is DevOps Jordan. And Christian, where can people follow you? Where can we tap in with you? So uh, basically, um, like I said, I'm kind of addicted to Twitter. Um, you can find me on Twitter at uh, Blackbox Cowder. Um, hopefully, you have also my link in the show notes. And if you like, I had already, uh, already built a link tree, so I can hand it over to you. And then it should be kind of easy to find me. Sweet. Well, thank you so much. Appreciate you joining us. You crushed it. You thanks said you were me. nervous early on. I, I'm really happy we got this one in there. And, and thanks to everybody for listening. Thanks for joining us. Uh, my exit line is just going to be, maybe a guarantee is going to be entered into my life more often now. <laughs> Thank Talk you. Later. Cheers. Thanks for listening to the PowerShell Podcast with your hosts, Jordan Hammond and Andrew Plough. Two kinds of flavor, two kinds of crunch. The PowerShell Podcast is a production of PDQ.com, making device management simple, secure, and pretty damn quick.